Test, test, test in the Ellis Gallery. Shout out to the Ellis Gallery. Come on in here. Thank you all. How's the temperature in here? It's probably not as hot for you all as it is for me right now. Please, someone tell me what just happened. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure what it was. Dance party! Yeah! A rusty dance party. Hey, Elliot, thanks for coming. Uh, is, that, is that about everyone in the, here in the vicinity? How's the volume? Should I turn it up or am I talking too loud? Oh, I didn't hear it up, but I'm turning it up. Well, thank you all so much for coming out tonight to the Studio 620. We're thrilled to have all of you here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some of the stories that have led to this work. Um, some of the narratives, so I'm going to talk about some of the practices that I found myself participating in to lead to some of these things. Um, and then I'll have a question and answer period. Um, and then after that I'll just be here if someone wants to stay and just have a one-to-one -one talk, we can do that too. So we got some music, yeah. Um, well first of all, I just need to make it known how many people were involved in making this possible. Um, it's just been extraordinary. I, I feel very blessed um, to have the friends, the family, the community I have. Um, I, did, I, wasn't even, I didn't even ha have everyone on this list that I have here on this wall because people were coming out after I made the list. Like, what can I do to help? And um, I've had, I had multiple friends here helping me install, carry stuff. Um, my parents have been a huge support. My dad worked with me. Um, he retired so he could have a full-time job being an artist assistant. He worked about full-time with me for a, for a week and a half. And that is just totally extraordinary. So this is him, and I think we should all cut. Um, anyone that helped with the install, could you, could you give a hand up? Give a hand up. Yeah, so my sister, brother-in-law, my best friends Dave, wife Beth, and Jerry, um, just so many people helped make this happen, just poured their life into, you know, to make it all happen. So I just want to make sure that everyone knows how much gratitude I have right now and how blessed I am. And thank you so much to Bob for believing, Woo! the Bob and the Studio 620 staff, the board, just thank you so much. They, I tell them this week, yeah. This, this is the only place in town that I, I could have the freedom to do something like this to really truly be able to express the vision that I've been given. And Bob has just been 100% behind me the whole time. Howell Building helped us put up these, uh, you know, Jim's been so supportive, helped us put up these walls. And so many materials have been donated. Um, I don't know if anyone from One America Jensen's here tonight, they just really went over the top in making this happen. Just financial support, just all sorts of support. Uh, ABA Solutions, um, which Dave owns. It's just such a pleasure to have him work with me and support me today for a huge support. Green Bench provided the, uh, the nice tasty beer for the opening. So, so many people supporting. My, Rachel, uh, my sister Rachel that wasn't able to be here is my Theo. You guys know Van Gogh. She yeah. is my Theo. She goes out of her way constantly to help support me. And, this is not something I've earned or even really asked for. She just, she's just that great of a person, just loves me that much, and I'm just so blessed that I have to let everyone know how blessed I am. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for your participation in that installation dance. Um, so I don't know if any of you have seen the um, wonderful article that came out in Creative Loafing, so thankful for that. Uh, it told a little bit of the story behind this work. Um, thank you, Forge Canada. Um, so the majority of this work is either directly from or inspired by a family land that my grandparents um, got around the time I was born in Gulf Hammock, Florida, in the heart of the nature coast. And um, since then, my wife and I, we have taken it over. We, we purchased it, and so now we have, we have, uh, we have named it the Floating Woods. 
And um, as you can see, there's a lot of things that were floating at one time in this space. And our dream um, now is to turn that into an artist in residence space, which you'll be hearing more about. For So th this community, the artists in this community, whether you're writers, you're painters, you're a band wanting to record an album, uh, can come up and we're going to have a farm up there. Um, so to come up and just experience, get inspired by what's up there, and then come back here and show the work here. So to keep that relationship going. Um, so. My grandfather, he built this log cabin by himself, went out into the woods, selected all the cypress trees, cut them all down. And this was just something I grew up with and it was totally normal. Like, oh yeah, hey, grand, hey, you just built that. What's that over there? I don't know, I just built it, you know? And uh, so I just have this wonderful heritage, this legacy. Um, and then after that, he built this huge barn, the size of this whole compound, and, built, and, and went ahead and, and built a 53 foot long concrete boat in it and where you made everything from scratch. And it was just to see that, to grow up experiencing that. And so a lot of these things that you see in these display cases, these cabinets of curiosity, the whole barn was a cabinet of curiosity for me as a kid. Because you know, there's all these leaves falling off of trees mixed with all these old circuit boards and these rusty nails. You had to wear shoes for sure. And uh, just like, just bizarre, wonderful things. And they all kind of like, blended together for me as a kid, and I just saw the wonder in, in both the natural world that God created that I could really interact with and become a part of, but then what happened when like, my family, when me personally becomes involved in it, and, if, and our history can be traced through the effects of, like, it, you know, over time, the weathering, the decay, and the just like where we happened to leave this thing at one time, and then some leaves fell on it, and roots grew through it, and then it becomes this like, impossibly beautiful work of art. And so then I, then I, came, out, then I came to this point where it's like, you know, I did paintings for a long time, I did more traditional work. It's like, these things are beautiful, how do I share these things? How do I show these things through the lens that I see things? The world that, I, that, uh, that I'm seeing, how do I share that as art? And, and that, that started um, with, with Project Creo, I don't know if you guys remember that. It was like a really cool, experimental, site-specific installation space. And so I started to be, in, be surrounded by these interesting themes and these practices where people are taking things from their daily lives in finding ways to, to turn them into really fascinating, compelling, challenging works of art. Uh, to really like, question the things around us and, and even like, in our place within it. Um, and so I'm gonna, that's kind of the broad story. And in the back, we're at the Ellis Gallery, there I featured some of my grandparents just straight up some of the, what I have told them is their artwork. My grandfather's original drawings of the cabin, of the boat, and I, I, I rescued them. I found them and discarded plastic bags, trash bags, in, in the property. And um, I rescued them in a state of, and I pulled them out of that, and that's the state of decay they had gotten to, the ones back there. And then, uh, and so, so I had those, and some of my grandmother's photography that's always been a real influence on me. I had that, I, and they were here for the opening, and my grandma's like, that's my sweatshirt. <laughs> Okay, you know, you know, get a picture of me next to it, you know. Uh, I don't know why it's here, but... Um, and so, I want to take you on a little bit of journey of some of the work. So there's two pieces from the boat remaining. One of them is, and this is what, this is what the clue to me. So my grandfather built this boat for 18 years by himself in the woods. Um, you know, including like, built this engine room out of parts from different semi-trucks that he had somehow gotten. And he's walking around the room like it's a movie, like this is an engine, and it's like, a, it's like the size of this wall. It's just like, uh. um, so, the, so I remember going up there one weekend and go exploring, seeing what progress he had made, and there was a hole in the bottom of the boat, a square cut out, and, and he had put like protected glass and like, you know, like made it, I think, secure. But he, you know, he's like, yeah, I put that in there so when we're out sailing, sailing around, you can look down and see the fish. I'm like, hmm. You know, and so looking back on that as an adult, and, and um, we had we recently cleaned the whole area of his workshop. Just over time, just kind of collapsed, and it kind of, it kind of, the whole thing looked like that display with that paper in there, or the, the paper on that wall over there. Like the whole thing just kind of collapsed over time, and became one object. Um, and that was fun to go through, but I found that thing he cut out. The, the, by the way, the boat, the boat is now pretty much sunk, and it's, it's just a cement hull in a river, the Wakasasa River up in Gulf Hammock, which there's one map of Gulf Hammock here, and it's, it's right up here, so make sure to check that out. Um, it's been a little bit disrupted, but that's okay. Um, 
so so in the back corner there there is that that square from the boat that cut out and to me that is a clue that shows me even though he spent 18 years doing this thing and it was since practical ways of failed project but it shows me that it was actually an artwork mm -hmm. and what it did it's the same thing that I would hope to do with this work is to is to help inform us about who we are as individuals and as a community and so that so I have that remnant and it shows me that like he is an amazing artist even if he wasn't aware of it at the time but how it affects me and, and how it's affecting all of us is is as art and so I just you know I like to find an opportunity to, to show that way Another piece that I have that's remaining from the boat, there's a tapestry up here. Um, and it, it is, I believe it is, I think it's mold growth. I don't know exactly, I've done a little bit of research, but the more I found out, I was like, oh, maybe I don't really need to know all the details. I just, it's just amazing that it exists. So, so there's, so this, this panel is from a sheet that my, my grandfather had my mother sew these cushion, uh, cushion covers. And I went up there in, in its early stages of decay, and I saw this sheet that has this fractal growth all over it. It just fascinated me, and I held on to it for years. And then I started looking at it like more and more often, and then I was like, these patterns are amazing. Like this is what I want to pursue. This is what I want to share with you. This is what I want to delve into with my practice. And so I traced traced all the the, the existing pattern, and then and then I, from there I took a, took me years actually to paint to negate all that was not the pattern so it's kind of like a tapestry tracing a tracing a history uh, like moments in time these fractal branches so those are the two things that I have remaining from the boat but both of those are clues or keys like springboards to launch into all of this so I, t I told someone the other day like you know, I spent 18 years having these dreams of, oh man, I'm really like a pirate going around the Caribbean and just, like, you know, just, just going around the world exploring in this boat. And then it's just like, oh. <laughs> but, but, the, but what I got from that whole process was then, like, not, not, not a way to explore the Caribbean, but a way to explore, like, and understand in a deeper way the whole cosmos. So that's kind of like a springboard into really investigating all these things. Um, so the pattern, there's a big theme of pattern, there's a big theme of, um, one of the major themes is, I think it's pretty apparent, is rescuing things out of decay, things that are broken, things that are lost, and seeing them, taking them out of their setting where they're lost and forgotten, and giving value to them, and finding ways of ascribing value and beauty to these things. And that's some of what, um, some of what this, this work has come out of. Another, another a major theme is the pursuit of patterns, collecting of patterns. Um, we were all holding up these earlier. These are, um, do you, do you all have yards and, and uh, you know, weeds and stuff in your yards and the leaves, do you ever see these little white lines in the leaves that appear? Those are actually larvae of flies. The flies lay their larvae in the leaf and the, then you can trace, there's a chronology, you can trace the, the course of their growth, of their gestation, um, to their birth as a fly. And, and so I started to see these like parallels and these themes of tracing this lineage, this history, this chronology. And so I started collecting those patterns, and you can see those throughout the work. And then some of these mangrove, these dead mangrove roots that I found, I started to see, like I hung them on my wall, I was like, that looks like a leaf miner pattern. And so then I started sculpting them, putting them together to even make, explore that even more. So there's those patterns. Um, another pattern that really stood out to me um, was the pattern that happens um, in these in these logs where there's these insects. Again, you can see you can see a timeline. You can see a, a almost a, a history, like a path, a trace. It's like a map of where they've been and where they went, and then you can see where they exited through the bark. Um, and so you have all these. And, and not until I started seeing this that I, I noticed that inside the cabin. Every single log has these patterns all over it. And I didn't notice it until I started seeing another context, and then it's just like, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just surrounded by these patterns, and it's just amazing. Um, so then, you know, so, so again, I'm trying to find ways to share the patterns, to, to share the, the, like the, just the wonder I have and the, and the mystery and, and just their formal qualities and how to present that as art. And so that's kind of, this is the result of that. And then, and then, of course, I have a lot of photographic works. 
And so this, these two particular pieces, I it's like, how do, well, how do I take that pattern and apply it even more as, our, as, a, as an exploration of my own history, of our own human history, and, um, or histories? And so I, I traced both of these, you know, wrapping around. It's important, I didn't really use computers for almost all of this stuff. It was really important to me to investigate this by hand and, and like really to, so all of the cutouts that you see of termite patterns in the photos and the papers, that's all to scale. So, so I traced actual magazines and stuff that I had, um, that I found and harvested and rescued out of decay and um, traced those patterns and then I transferred them to scale to the photos. And it was an interesting process where I was actually like somehow like taking on the role of these insects or, or just getting into their, you know, I'm eating up these photographs, to, to, so to speak. So I cut all those out with X-Acto knives and it took a little bit of time. Um, so I want to talk about this piece in particular. So I traced this one and there's a piece around that third wall. Um, and that was, that was kind of like the last piece in the series. So I started out with some of my own photography and, and own history, and then I, I went in, I, I collected these images from Slab City, the dead, a, a little bit outside of the Nature Coast, but you know, but I brought them back to the Nature Coast, the patterns are from the cabin. Um, so I, so I, I wanted to kind of remove myself and my own s sentiment from the process a little bit, so I started investigating these layers and these cutouts with these images, these, I, I rescued them out of a trailer in, in the uh, you know, Mojave Desert, like a, you know, they were just abandoned, just photo albums. So, so I started doing some work with that, and that led me then to see how I could make connections with some of my own uh, family history. And so, there's a piece, a larger photo collage, and it is um, that one's really special to me. Um, but that is it. That, that pattern in that, that cutout of the three faces, is actually it's this pattern that I traced onto the image of myself, and I I, let, I took the one and layered it over my one sister, and then. I layered over the other sister. So that's a little bit of um, just a little bit of history behind some of the concepts. And one more concept I want to talk about uh, briefly is um, over there too. Hey, um, is the concept of the curi uh, cabinet curiosity, and that to me became a way to formally show what I was doing already. That you know, um, I got married a couple years ago, and. Um, of course, she's been standing there the whole time. And the first person I should have thanked with ultimate gratitude is yeah. my wife, and she's standing here the whole time. And she put up with me the whole time, took her face. Come here. So, um, yes, I promised I was going to get to this. Thank you for coming over. I know you love that so much. Thank you. Um, so, so, yeah, so I'm just like, I really want to pursue my. My vocation as an artist, and this and that, and, and uh, like I decorated our house. Just this is what I did in driftwood. There's no art. It's just driftwood and like these weird odd displays with like rocks and bookshelves. And she's like, "Why don't you just do this? You do it already." And so it's like, and then it became it's like, yeah, you know, like, do, it, do what you already enjoy doing. And so it was a process of finding ways to formally share like the way I see things and the way I group things. Almost like a, you know, like a, I'm orchestrating and composing, and that I'm a collector. You know, I'm selecting. Um, and so that was a way I could f more formally present those um, objects in a way that made them, uh, so where I could communicate uh, some of the ideas, some of the connections that I've seen. And there's some pretty strange stuff. I, I, um, I first wanted to start out by having a more traditional uh, display case, uh, which is up here in the front, and, and then continue to disrupt that as much as possible over here um, with some of the, th this, the strange and wonderful things I've found. Um, I'm sure there's much more, but uh, I'm sure there's a few questions. Um, that's enough enough of me spouting at for the moment. But uh, yeah, does anyone have, we'll just take a couple questions and then I'll just wander around and if anyone has more questions. Yes. Rachel. This uh, photograph, this story here, tell me about that. The narrative photography yeah. on, the fr on the front wall. Oh, uh, I'm just repeating it so everyone hears. Yeah. The, the, the photography. Yeah, she's asking about the photographer. Um, that, so I wanted to, so yes, I, I'm also a photographer in, in a lot of the way that I see things in a way that you like finally are, are seeing the product has come through just, you know, years of taking just countless pictures um, of all different perspectives. And, and so I wanted to include some of the photography to provide kind of the human element within the environment, provide some context, um, provide some, you know, just some balance to the actual objects, um, just just so just get another way to, to see it from 
to see it in a more whole, uh, hopefully, you know, because everyone's, everyone, um, you know, different, different things they respond to more. Some people like the garbage, um, the rescued garbage. Some people really love the more formal imagery. And I think together there, there can be this symbiosis, this balance, this uh, synthesis, hopefully, if I can say that word. Um, so, yeah, so, so these images up here, this, these photographs, these, um, these are in, influenced by the uh, Russian film director, uh, Andrei Tarkovsky, his film Stalker specifically. I recommend that to everyone. Uh, we've actually done a showing of it in that pool before. Um, yeah, so it pretty much looks like the cabin. I, and so when I saw those movies, it really shaped, it really like blew my mind and shaped how, I, how all of this has come out. Um, so that's the photography. Yes. You wrote hold fast on a couple of your pieces. What's the hold fast thing about? Hold fast, even. Uh, um, <laughs> so I'm very interested in language and um, the, how that affects who we are, how that affects how we communicate. Language is such an integral. So I've included a lot of like magazines and papers, and they all have language on them. And there's even some bones covered up it's, um, in our bones. And um, so language is very integral. Um, even when it's disrupted, it, it kind of, it, even when it's interrupted from its normal um, process and, and normal purpose, it really brings attention to, to the role that language plays in how we perceive things, how we describe things, how we even think about things. And that has so much to do with how we interact as a community. And, and so I'm exploring some of those themes. And Holdfast specifically is, is um, that's an image taken from an actual print in an old King James Bible. So hold fast is kind of an antiquated term, um, you know? and uh, it's it's like stand stand firm, be true, um, like remain, um, and that's that's just been kind of an encouraging mantra to me throughout, and and, and that's the first of I have, I have a lot of ideas of exploring language in different ways, and that's kind of the first phrase that really stood out to me that I really pursued. You know? Any other questions, Mr. David Ellis? With the what? With the didgeridoo, the musical instrument. With the didgeridoo? So you're saying the connection between termites and fungus and didgeridoos? How about the fungus, but the didgeridoo, the interior of it is keeping away by the termites? Oh, the actual making of a didgeridoo is, is collaborative with the insects? I have not, but I think we're going to have a conversation in a matter of minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Anyone else have any questions? Cool. Well, I'm going to be wandering around. I'm going to play some music now. So just thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all for supporting the studio and being interested in what we're doing. Thank you. And thank you once again, Maggie. She's amazing. Amazing, amazing woman. Maggie, right there.